right, welcome to the Closing Beat, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. How we doing out there? Doesn't look right, does it? I don't look as good as I normally do, huh? That's a stretch. Let's come over here and do that, huh? Shine a little bit more light on that schnoz there. Hey, welcome to the Closing Beat. We're uh, financial advisors and a little offbeat, as you can tell. We do things a little bit differently here, but one of the things that we're really passionate about is teaching. So we're always going to be here to teach. And I do that to just try to show that to the general public on a daily basis by going over the stock markets, keep the opinions out of it. We like to use stats when possible. And uh, it's gonna be a tough one to keep opinions out of it today because can we just talk a little politics? Can we do it? Uh, well, I promise I'll do like I always do. We'll talk politics as it pertains to the market, right? I don't care about all the other stuff. But uh, hey, it was Inauguration Day. So whether you your side won or lost or whatever, uh, we took a look at the performance of how does the markets perform on Inauguration Day? Because it was a pretty good day. I mean, if it, all things aside, if you, you just look at the market, you go, meh, good day. I'm happy with that. Now, the NASDAQ naturally did a little bit better today because of uh, earnings uh, and the big tech stocks. But on Inauguration Day, what president do you think has the best performance and what president do you think has the worst? Cody, do you know the answer already? Uh, I, I don't. Yes, my you, guess is Ronald Reagan. Your guess is Ronald Reagan? Yeah. Has, has the best, best or worst? Best. So Ronald Reagan, he had two terms, so I'll use the average. On Inauguration Day, 2.28% is what the market did, the S&P, which is actually really good. I mean, that's a big day. It's better than today. And Ronald Reagan ranks as the best Inauguration Day president. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. And uh, all right, you want to go with the worst? Who do you think has the worst? I'll give you all of them that we look back. You got uh, Clinton, uh, first term, second term. You got uh, Reagan, which you guessed. You got W. Bush, H. W. Bush, Obama, Trump, and that's as far as we could go back. Who do you think was the worst on Inauguration Day? Are you asking me or the chat? I'm asking you, and then the chat will catch up. And uh, we're going with uh, Barack Obama. Okay, two for two. Did you know this already? It's almost like I read the post. Oh, man, you already <laughs> got it there. All right, well, so he knew the answer there, but Barack Obama um, actually has the worst, and that would be on, uh, well, you got to think about where he was coming into. That was financial crisis, so not picking on anybody, but that is by far the worst. The market lost 5.2% on Inauguration Day. Worst performance uh, as far as we can go back to take a look at that. So uh, the good news is we had an up market today, whatever side doesn't matter on that. Um, but uh, we also hit new highs. That's record highs for the stock market today. And a lot of the earnings got pushed off to the side a little bit. And it's kind of kind of sucks, right? Because we're in the middle of earnings season. And uh, the big banks actually are kind of wrapping up. I'll sh let's just show you here. So the big banks, uh, and I mean the big guys, your Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, you know what I'm talking about. These guys basically wrapped up today with Morgan Stanley. So Morgan Stanley there is the last of the big banks to report. And now we go down into here. I shared this with you the other day. We're going from, uh, what about here? To here. These are all the earnings here. And you're going to notice something. We've got a lot of the regional banks or the smaller banks still to report. That's cool. They, they help move the markets too. But now we're shifting a little bit more towards where we get into airlines and a little bit broader mix of earnings. So if you have a, a nice diversified mix of stocks or you like playing uh, stocks in general, now you're going to start to see the jello on the plate start to move around a little bit. You got IBM in there, some of the banks, pet meds will be interesting. Uh, you got United to start with some of the airlines. I believe tomorrow is American Airlines. Oh, right here, yeah, American Airlines. And this just gives you a little bit of the historical performance of the stocks there. So your best performing stock is going to be SVB Financial. Uh, I thought it was going to be intuitive uh, surgical, but this earnings season, you've got SVB. So regional bank there as well. Uh, best on revenue is going to be intuitive surgical there. And you can kind of see the, let's just go up there, right there. You can see up here the headers at the top. You got the average gap higher. So in this case, looks like Intuitive Surgical. That is a pretty volatile stock, and, and it will be the most volatile stock tomorrow um, uh, compared to history. But uh, you got the average day's gain, positive, decent looking there. What I would point out is the banks, they've mostly had good earnings, but they've resp investors responded by selling the stock. So we'll cover that there in just a little bit. But I just want to keep you updated on the old earnings cycle coming on and, and continuing there. Let's go over to the uh, stock market, take a look and see what's going on. Let's start with the NASDAQ again, because that was your biggest gainer overall. You look at the NASDAQ, I'll use the futures here. Breaking the new highs, quick reversal from Friday's declines there. That was your leader today. Netflix, this is a funny story. 
Netflix gains uh, 17%, right? Finishes the day with a 17% gain. Biggest gainer in the NASDAQ, but comes in fourth place in terms of being the biggest contributor. It gained four times more than any other stock or any of the other bigger stocks, but yet the other stocks are weighted more heavily than Netflix. So even though it gained four times more, didn't matter. Now Netflix actually gapped higher today, a uh, pretty sizable gap higher. It was up uh, only the 14th time in history that it's had a gap of over 10%. Was it 10% uh, today? Let's see, so we started here. 13%, right? So that's only the 14th time in history that that's happened, which to me is kind of surprising there. There were only three of those times where it reversed course and went all the way back down negative for the day. So it's very common for this stock. If it gaps up a lot, it's going to hold it very rare that it uh, retraces. All right. Also in the NASDAQ there, you got Baidu uh, made new highs as well. This was kind of the Chinese play today. The Chinese stocks did well. JD.com almost hit new highs there. Alibaba higher. And that's mostly all of that because of Jack Ma uh, back in the public eye there after two or three months, something like that. He's been kind of off on vacation. I don't know, but... Uh, that sort of squashes those uh, concerns. Um, and then semiconductors were the weak area of the day. The names I've been mentioning, this is very normal for extended, very extended stocks or industries to have these wild back and forth days. You had that with KLA 10 core. Uh, you had that with Lam Research. AMAT was another one if you're looking. These uh, yesterday's really strong, today back down, maybe tomorrow's back up. That's that volatility at tops which is uh, kind of a normal topping volatility. All right, moving over to the Russell 2000. There we go. Russell 2000 hit new highs today and then retreated just a little bit. It is sitting at a 30% gain in three months. I'm going to try something different. Mm -hmm. There we go. So it, this is a different way of looking at this. This is not obviously the performance of the Russell. It is a rolling three-month return uh, of the Russell. So in other words, we look three months, what did it do over that period? We look another three months, what did it do? Three months and so on and so on and so on. Right now, we have a rolling three-month gain of over 30%. Now, don't let this fool you here. There's the zero line is right smack in the middle. So this is not the only time it has made a 30% gain. See how it's at highs here? Looking back to the late 70s. This is the only time where the Russell was already positive, And then in that three-month period, gained an additional 30%, now going on 33%, right? Uh, 32%. So ask yourself, is what the Russell 2000 is doing, is it odd? Can you find any other time in history, some were close, is there any other time where the Russell 2000 had a three-month gain of 30% or more after being positive and then continued to gain? There's now one time right? So could this be the one time it continues and goes to 60, 70, 80%? Of course, right? I'm just showing you what happens, that it would be very odd for that to happen. So when you're looking at the Russell 2000, if you've been participating here and you've got some big gainers and stuff, it kind of tells you that the stats say you should be in profit-taking mode. Not my opinion. It's just, it's just telling you that. Also, if I go back, that's the second time in less than a year where the Russell has gained that much that fast. So if we don't count the fact of it being positive, two times in one year, a 30% move. One was off the virus low, and then one, of course, here recently. Uh, but very, very impressive there for the Russell. Also, very odd. Uh, looking at the S&P here, we're pushing uh, about 3% gains year to date. Netflix, <laughs> although it was the biggest gain, oh no, Netflix was, um, come on now, there you go. It was uh, also the fourth biggest contributor even though it gained all kinds of more percentages than the other stocks. It was only the fourth biggest contributor. Uh, Ford, by the way, big move for that one here today. Second biggest gainer uh, in the S&P today. You had some analysts from Deutsche Bank uh, put out some positive comments about not only Ford, but the auto industry, the EV players, and Tesla as well. Um, if you want to look into it, uh, banks, that, that, that bugs me, banks mostly doing well on earnings. They're getting sold into here rather than being bought up probably because of the extended move that they've already had. So something to keep in mind there. My, uh, Morgan Stanley, like I said, wrapped it up. Great earnings, beat by um, a mile, right? Morgan Stanley was, uh, do I have it in here? Uh, beats on revenue by 18, 15 to 18%. Uh, trading revenue was also very strong, double-digit gains there. Asset management beat as well, but that's, that's a small piece of uh, their business. So Morgan Stanley... Their asset management business is about uh, 8%, 10% of their overall revenue. So that's not a big deal there. 
and uh, I'm just rambling. So now we go on to like U.S. Bank. Uh, these stocks all sold off as well. We talked about some of these yesterday. Zion pulling back as well. Fitboy pulling back uh, just a little bit, but they're all extended. This pullback now tells you it's a viable pullback. Maybe right, not right now, but you know that the banks were performing well. They just got extended. People took profits into the good news. And so as they take profits, that pullback may generate a buying opportunity for you. All right, so that's the financials. Um, I want to do one other. We're gonna, when we do the sector breakdown here, I want to do one other thing. So if I could just pop over here. Here are all the sectors. Uh, again, it's a little available for all of our customers there. You're welcome to use it. But we talked about consumer staples, did we not? So we were looking at consumer staples, and I kind of pointed this out that over the last month, this was yesterday, pointed out over the last month or so, we've got a pullback here. And so we went through a list of stocks to say, hey, well, when it starts to bounce, you want to look at those stocks that did better or pulled back the same amount as consumer staples. Well, today, consumer staples sold off. You can see it there. You got a nice little bottoming tail. By the way, if you're not familiar with uh, what these candlesticks are, you just pop on over here to, if you're one of our customers, pop on over here, hit the search button, and just type in candlesticks. And we got a three-part series in there for you. So uh, I, I can't stay on topic today. I'm just having that problem today. But otherwise, we, we like to teach that kind of stuff. So you'd actually be able to go in there and learn what all this stuff means. But uh, let's go back. Let's take a look. So we got consumer staples pulling back, but all of a sudden starts to rally today. Comes off the low a little bit. What stocks were the best gainers? I want you to look at this chart right here. See how it's pulling back? Now we're going to go look at the best gainers today, meaning the people that, what stocks did people go run to when consumer staples started to take off? First, Tyson, best gainer today. Did that one pull back with the sector over the last month? No, didn't pull back, so it held up, showed some strength. Estee Lauder, this is the exact one that we pointed out yesterday. It pulled back about the same amount, still a beast of an uptrend. What happened today? People said, I want the best of the best if I'm going to go pick on the weakest sector in the market. Cisco barely pulled back. See how it got more of the attention today. This is so cool that you can look at this. I could do this for hours, by the way, but Constellation Brands, doesn't matter which ones I pick today. The bigger gainers were your, uh, what's known as relative strength stocks in that sector. And now you see from yesterday's analysis to today's performance, how cool is that? I really love looking at stuff like that. So I uh, just want to point that out. And uh, consumer staples, definitely something that's getting a little bit of attention. All right, that's it. I got, uh, that's all I have for sectors, but I do need to point out Costco. This was our stats play. Uh, one day, it actually, it, just, it was good timing, I guess. But uh, we covered this yesterday. 70.5% uh, of the time when Costco is as extended as it is now, take a picture of that, the average gain over the next five days is 1.22%. Uh, it did gain 1.9 today, so a little bit better than the average, at least as of now. Um, and so we could just delete that line so we're not messing with anything there. I don't have often a lot of stats plays lately because they've been... They've been sort of bummers out there, but uh, as far as, you know, these little tiny gains. But um, all right, let's do stocks. Uh, we're going to do new highs, new lows. There we go. You got 54 new highs today, right? Yeah, 54 new highs on the day. No new lows. It would have been pretty embarrassing if you're a stock that made new lows today. Uh, that would mean you are severely out of favor. I'm going to point out uh, Alphabet. Agree or disagree with what they've done lately. Alphabet is at new highs here after being quiet for a couple of months. Uh, so finally waking up volume the big focus there if you own if you own that stock or want to own it. CarMax, the breakout yesterday, we were talking about that this all of a sudden has woken up. It broke all kinds of uh, resistance areas, and that volume gives you the hint that you would not be the only one buying it the next day if you did participate. So that one made new highs. Again, that's obviously very extended here, but something to look at. Uh, T. Rowe Price, this gets a relative strength winner uh, award for the day, meaning the bank stocks and, and the financials, they basically pulled back, right? We, we were just kind of talking about that. They're not doing a whole lot. They're, they're kind of floundering. Some of these stocks have pulled back. But old T. Rowe Price, that one made new highs today. Relative strength is very much the same thing we just talked about in the consumer staples sector there. Then from there, you really just move on to your power trends. These are called power trends here. The slow and steady, but very strong uptrends. You got QCOM hitting new highs today. Notice that it's not too extended. They're they're called power trends because they're nice and tight, right? So you got that going on. Uh, Corvo, 
was another one. Look at that tight trend there, maybe starting to try to pull away, but nothing just yet. You got Johnson & Johnson looking good, also above a recent range. Uh, Johnson & Johnson does this, by the way. It's kind of like Verizon. It has these moments where it, it teases you like it's going to do something, and then all of a sudden breaks out and gets going, kind of like General Motors, I guess, too. Uh, so that's Johnson & Johnson. And last was Discovery Financial, or Discover Financial. Power trend there, consistently hitting new highs and uh, teased you with breaking over the $100 number today. So looking good for new highs, new lows. Let's try some stocks in the news. And then uh, if you have questions, let me know. Be happy to try to answer your questions. So Netflix, this is earnings. You know everything about this. Netflix beats by 82 cents. Uh, they actually lowered their guidance going forward, but they said, we're going to be profitable, man. And if you look at their numbers, look last night, um, for every, put it this way, for every dollar of revenue that they make, uh, or bring in, they've got 40 cents of earnings. That's good for Netflix. Remember, Netflix used to spend all their money. They still spend a lot of money, uh, but they have more subscribers and more subscribers means more revenue. And remember, every dollar of revenue means 40 cents or more. They hinted that they, they think they would be able to shoot for more of uh, revenue. So dollar or dollar of revenue, 40 cents of earnings. That's something we can all wrap our heads around. And if subscriber counts are going up and, and kind of doing well as they have, it just means more revenue, which means more earnings. And so investors love that today. That was That's your really simplified breakdown of their earnings today. Uh, okay, so you got Morgan Stanley beats by 53 cents. Revenue's better than expected. Uh, I went through kind of everything a minute ago and uh, got sold off just a little bit. A flat day for them. Alibaba got Jack Ma back in the news today, 5.5% because the fearless leader is back and he's at least visible. Um, he's not the leader, but seen as that. Uh, Pfizer down just a touch on the day. Uh, it says they said that their COVID-19 vaccine will be effective against that new strain in the UK that everybody's worried about. And um, really the stock didn't do a whole lot. That one really was the buy into the rumor of the launch of the vaccine, sell on the actual launch of the vaccine. Um, so see what happens there. JB Hunt, JB Hunt actually comes out with uh, earnings. They beat by 13 cents. Revenue's better than expected. Lots of cool stuff going on in here. If this company, yeah, it's not a Tesla. I give you that, but it's a really interesting company, in my opinion, to kind of study how they, and it's really simple to understand. Trucks go, pick stuff up, trucks deliver stuff. How many trucks are delivering stuff versus picking stuff up? And is there any empty loads? What's their load ratio? Meaning how much of that truck is empty? So um, maybe something we can expand on uh, going forward. And what else do I have for you? Interactive brokers beat on earnings as well. And that is just the start of it. So likely we're going to be talking about earnings quite a bit going forward. We went over all the stocks uh, tomorrow, Intuitive Surgical being the um, most volatile of all of them. Some of our small cap names report as well. We got Marine Max in there. So that's exciting. And you've got dividends coming out. Uh, Procter & Gamble, 79 cents. William Sonoma, uh, 53 cents. CBS, 50 cents. And don't forget about the changes in the S&P 500. Trimble is taking the place of Concho Resources and Yeti is taking Trimble's place in the S&P 400. I love it. Uh, let's see if you uh, have any questions that I uh, can help you with there. I think the big tech stocks obviously, you know, kind of celebrated a, a political win because you know, uh, it's clear what side they're on. And also it's clear what this administration and the new group, um, how they're going to handle uh, some of the issues that, that well, I don't think they're really going to handle them, but that's good news. Uh, any sign of uh, maybe deep uh, regulation getting pushed aside or even working on some of that uh, like Mark Zuckerberg wants to do. Good for that one there. Yep. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh, what do you think on Dominion? So you, oh, good question. So you own it. Where would you look to, where was the question? Uh, where would you look to sell? So did you just buy it? I think maybe it's something like that. Cause this got a downtrend here. I'm assuming you just bought it. This is your moment in time. It's kind of got to bounce right in here. Otherwise you're floating around in no man's land, right? Any technical trader can say, man, it bounced over here. I mean, that's simple analysis. No, everybody could see that. But if it doesn't bounce from here, then you have the technical traders that say, I don't know what to think of this. Maybe it pulls back a little more or whatever, but there's too much risk here down to 60. And I'm not interested. Um, so where would you sell it? If it starts to bounce here, your first probably short-term targets around 75, 79 would be the second uh, for like an intermediate short-term kind of a trade, if that's what you're doing. 
Yeah. Thoughts on Cody? Uh, dead money at the moment. This has been sort of frustrating because it was exciting for a while when it came off the lows and, and then it just went sideways. So this is a tough one to say, yay, buy it because it's not doing anything. Um, obviously, you have this moment in time coming up here where technical traders could be interested, but why? Why commit to dead money uh, until it starts to move? Yep. I love it. MAB, don't let your staff make a, a, a appointments to talk to prospects since you aren't taking new clients. We are not. Yep, today was the last day on that one to kind of weed that stuff out. And uh, we'll be back, though. We'll be back. Don't you worry about it. We will be back. We're going to get some things organized here to look good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, what's the difference between IR returns and raw returns on the site? So you're, when you're looking in the new dojo there. Yep. So we're going to put tool tips on there. So it uh, explains for everybody. It's a common question that we get. Uh, so the raw returns are the returns of the strategy. So if you're in a mix of funds, well, how did those mix of funds do irrespective of your deposits or whatever you did. The internal rate of returns or the IR returns is how did the, uh, how was the performance of the strategy as well as factoring in your deposits and your dividends and your interests, if you had withdrawals maybe, uh, that. Uh, so that's the difference uh, in the short term there. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> well, what about adding, oh, come on now, come on. So you've got this stock. Now you didn't tell me what your price was, right? But you've got this stock. I just was assuming you bought it somewhere in here. I don't think you add to this one at such a moment. This is one where you say, I would add to it. Show me something. I would add to it if you show me something. Don't do the whole averaging in on this one uh, with this area. Uh, personally, that's, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, still buy, start buying gas. Oh, you like, you like the gas prices higher. You know, I always studied the energy, uh, energy sector there when they had, uh, that downturn last year. And so it's very normal to see a pretty sizable recovery, uh, these years. And, and that's what's happening. I mean, it refuses to pull back actually. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> Averaged up in Fang today. Oh, you like that. Fa oh, so fa yeah. Fang the diamond back, not Fang. Uh, good, good, good. I think pullbacks are still viable on that one. Uh, this is more of a investment look than a uh, than a trade, of course. Yep, I love it. Arc is way better ETF than the S and P 500. Tony, uh, for now it is. <laughs> Keep in mind how aggressive they are. Uh huh. You're gonna buy when they show you something. Yeah. Ah, right, yeah. There you go. I like it. I like it. That's perfect. And, and you would do that with anything else in life. Show me something. Would you invest in a company that's not making money? Like if it was your brother or your uncle or something? No, you give him money. Show me some growth. <laughs> Same thing. I love it. I'm going to uh, wrap it up there. Gold projections, actually. Is, so sl hot, sloppy mess, by the way. Uh, so you've got to factor it. This is not gold, just gold behaving be, and gold stocks behaving because of the price of gold. This is, you got to factor in stimulus. You got to factor in tax potential in the U S as well as corporate tax and potentially around the world, uh, changes. You've got to factor in inflation. There's so much going on in gold. It's a difficult one to time in the short term. I have no interest in, in trying to, uh, what you would say trade, uh, gold in the short term, too much news, um, risk, right. Or headline risk is that, financial advisors are supposed to say, right? You know that, you taught that one. <laughs> all right, I'll wrap it up there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Do it all over again. See ya.